Today, we began a new series. For 12 weeks plus, we dealt with the book of Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to tell you, that was some of the toughest preaching that I have ever had to preach. It is a tough book to read, to understand, to grasp, and to preach, and to live by. But I pray that your heart has been changed. So today, we're starting a new series, and we have brought you through the book of Ecclesiastes. We've brought you through the strong preaching and teaching of Paul in the book of Romans. And today, we're stepping into this glorious book called Joshua. And our subject title is simply, as you've seen, the music has been reflective of what now? A tough decision to make. We face with decisions every day, aren't we? We're faced with issues and circumstances that bring about and bring us to the place today. And sometimes we don't know what to do. Sometimes we just find ourselves throwing our hands up and saying, what do I do? Where do I turn? How do I get past this? How do I get through this? What am I going to do in what I am facing? Well, stay with me today, and I believe you'll see the power of God work mightily in your life. If you will take today, and there's going to be a key word that we're going to be honing in on here towards the end of the message that is really the, the facilitator of making what happened in your, happens in your life, making it fruition and making it a reality today. I like the book of Joshua because, you know, I think about the name of Joshua, his name and the name of this book reflects on God is salvation. And that is an awesome title to have for your name, isn't it? I'm not sure what Carlton is, but I don't think I want to know either. But anyway, we find that the book of Joshua is packed with practical lessons and challenging concepts today to help us to grasp this principle of a spirit-led life. And today, many of us have found ourselves in being controlled by the issues that we face. For the last 14 months, we've gone through a pandemic, a coronavirus, and we've got other issues going on, other things, and we think, well, we're coming out of this, we can rip off the we can get back to normalcy. I'm not sure if there is a normalcy to get back to, and I'm not sure if we want to get back to some of the things that we thought were what we called normalcy from that standpoint. But we realize today in life, regardless of the circumstances or the issues that we're faced, there's always things that we have to encounter. Joshua is one of two books that you really need to master in your life from the book of the Old Testament. The first one, of course, being the book of Joshua. The second one being the book of Daniel. What is amazing about the book of Daniel that it goes hand in hand with a book in the New Testament called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So the book of Joshua, it helps us today to withstand the full impact of the battles and the times of difficulty that we're faced with. It brings us to the point that we all have battles with the world. The devil is out to devour us, to feed us, and to try to bring us away from what our belief system is, that we believe in the one true living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the great work that he has done, is doing, and is going to do. But the devil will come along, and in all of his schemes and trickery today, and he will try to shake your belief system. System. He will try to annihilate your trust in God. But I want to remind you today, the devil is a defeated foe. That means he's a defeated foe today. He was a defeated foe yesterday, and he's going to be a defeated foe forever. So today, you as a child of God, you're on the winning side, and you're not walking in the shoes of defeat, but you're walking in the shoes of victory today because you have trusted the Lord as your Savior today. You not only deal with the devil, but you deal with the world you deal with the flesh and you deal with a lot of things today that is constantly throwing things against you to try to put you in a place of defeatism and a place today that you throw in the towel, give up and walk away. Let me tell you what, with what God has done in your life, you can't walk away from him today. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a good God we serve. What a gracious God we serve. What a mighty God today who has brought us through everything and has prepared a place for us. And today, if we'll learn the power of believing and trusting the Lord, I'm going to tell you, you're going to find out God will bring you through whatever you encounter in life. The book of Joshua falls into basically three main divisions today. And those divisions, it starts with what we're in today in chapter 1 and goes through chapter 4. And this talks about the entrance into the land. There were some challenges. Moses had died. There were some things going on. 
Basically, Joshua was a no-name and had not really done anything to prove himself like Moses had. So what does he do? Where does he turn? I'm glad that Joshua turned to the Lord, and I'm glad we can turn to him today also. If you're struggling today on how to enter into this spirit-led and spirit-empowered life today, I'm going to tell you this section is for you. What we're going to be proclaiming in God's Word is what you and I need in our life today. Don't sit there and say, yeah, that's what so and so on the other side of the church or somebody that didn't make it today no it's for every one of us and we all need it today thank God you can today you can move out of the wilderness of doubt that we find ourselves in you can come out of that restless wandering of the world that many times tries to pull us in and defeat us and today you can feel the full blessings of a spirit filled spirit led life. I'm glad today when you're spirit filled today you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen. It's important that we're doing that. Secondly, chapters 5 goes to chapter 20. That's as a part where it covers the, the conquest that Israel would participate in and be involved in. And so it would bring them through the lands of conflicts and the difficulties and the challenges and the battles that they would face and they came to a land that God had already promised Moses that would be a land flowing with milk and honey and promises and I'm glad God has always and always delivers on what he says he will do. Then thirdly we come to chapter 22 and go into chapter 24 and here this sets before us the many perils and dangers that are in the land. There were giants, there were difficulty, there were problems. Yeah you remember the 12 spies went out, 10 of them came back and said oh man this place this is amazing. You wouldn't believe the size of the grapes. The biggest bowling balls. Bananas as big as a man. This thing is amazing. This is awesome. But they said there's giants in the land. Caleb and Joshua said, it's all of that, but we're well able. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we've got a God who today enables us that we can be today more than a conqueror through him that loved us today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've got to realize that there are dangers and pearls and troubles that we face every day. But we've got to guard today and we've got to remain today in the place of victory. The devil wants to get your eyes, your heart, your attention, and your spirit off of the Lord. And if he does that, then you'll open pray for everything that he's going to defeat you with. But you've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got to trust in the Lord regardless of what the circumstances are today. You may have gotten up this morning and said, hmm, it's a dark, dismal day. Hmm, it's kind of cool and kind of rainy. Hmm, I feel so down. Well, I hate to tell you, but the sun is still shining beyond the clouds. Amen. Don't let the circumstances today rob the blessings of God out of your life. There's a God who's mighty who will bring you through whatever you encounter and whatever you are facing. The greatest lesson of the spiritual life today is the fact today that you and I, here we have no strength in ourselves. You can't do anything. And these folks that come around say, I got this. I can handle that. I'm bigger than that. Yeah, really? You better rethink that. Because you can't even breathe without the breath that God gives you today. You can't even walk without God enabling you today. You've got to come today to the fact today of your weakness and your strength, but also your dependence upon the Lord. I'm glad that he is a dependable God. I'm glad he'll bring you through whatever you're encountering and facing. I'm glad he's the God of victory today. And you and I can put our confidence and our faith and our reliance in him. I don't care what you face. It's not bigger than our God, is it? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. A mighty God. A great God. A good God today. You must have that sense today of that constant need of God's strength. And you must have that constant dependence upon the Lord in your life daily. Now take the powerful book that you've brought with you today. And if you didn't bring a Bible, no problem. I'm going to read to you today the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verses 1 through 9. If you have your Bible, you're welcome to follow along. Some things you might want to notice here. You may want to notice what God called Moses. You may want to notice three captions that define what God said Joshua is. 
So you need to notice these words. These words are important because these words are the word of God. Amen. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Moses' minister, saying, he was the assistant. He was the gopher. <laughs> he, was the, he was the guy that did what Moses told him to do. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, rise and go over this Jordan. And if you know anything about the Jordan River, you know that there are seasons there in Israel. And there's times that that river is not much wider than the, this front pew in front of me. And there's other times it's over a mile in width. And that's during the rainy season. It was during that season that it wasn't just a pond or a stream. It was a spance of water that he had to get through and get over. So he says, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river Euphrates, and the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Listen, church. That promise was not only for Joshua and the children of Israel. That promise is for you and I. Amen. And scripture after scripture today definitively de de describes that and gives us that hope. Be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Going on, he, he continues... Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's not prosperity theology. That's Bible theology. Amen. Amen. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong, and be of good what? Courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Man, what a promise from God. And what a victory he brought. Well, you know the story. If you know anything about the word of God, you know exactly what happened. You know how God provided. Hey, he brought them through the Jordan. He took them into the promised land. And I don't want to preach all the chapters today. But I have to look at today some issues and things that we face every day. Questions that we are posed with. Questions like, what does it take to discourage you to quit today? You ever felt like that? I just feel like quitting. I just feel like, what's the use? I just feel like I don't want to go on anymore. And maybe you've even got to the point, you say these words, be careful how you say them. I just wish I was dead. Careful. Are you ready today? Are you really ready today for the fog of life to lift in your life so that you can start living in victory today? That's a question. Has, has this question today been plaguing you? What? Do I do now? What now? Where do I go from here? What am I going to do with my life? What in the guy, Gary Miracle, all his limbs were severed, uh, taken off from him, and you saw what he did. In a position where he could have quit and given up, he moved on, and he trusted God. I'm going to, I want you to know something right now, church, and for those of you who are watching, I want you to know today that God's in this room right now,
And he's ready to move, he's ready to heal, and he's ready to strengthen, he's ready to save, he's ready to bless you today, he's ready today to lift you up, and he's ready to turn your life around if you today will exercise the faith of reaching out and trusting this God who can do all things above and beyond whatever you could ever think. You know, when life has failed you today, hardships have failed you, family has failed you, friends have failed you, your job has failed you, your government has failed you, your, everything has fallen apart in your life, and you're going through the struggles and the hard places, you know, you ask, what am I going to do now? Where do I turn? What am I going to do in life? Where do you look? What do you put your confidence in? Do we run to governmental programs? Do we run today to try to find some means of help? I want you to imagine something here today. I can imagine how Joshua felt. Moses was dead. He was called the servant of the Lord. He was called, Joshua was basically just called an assistant. He was just called someone that was alongside to do whatever Moses told him to do. His resume didn't have much importance I mean, what he had done was no big deal. Yeah, but he went into the land. He came back with a good report. That's great. But he had not proven anything. And so here we find ourselves in somewhat the same position that perhaps Joshua was in, and we become shell-shocked by the circumstances that we face in life. Where do I turn now? What do I do? And you realize today you're not certain about the way forward. You don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know what to do next. Listen, I want you today to stay with this and in the weeks ahead. Because you know what? In these chapters that we're going to cover, your name and my name is written on this book. We are in the pages of God's Word. So after the first five books Moses wrote in the Old Testament, in which we know and we love, we find Joshua's basically... Actually, he's tied very closely to these books. Now, for Joshua, let's face the circumstances. Moses is dead. And what does Joshua do now? He's got a lot of people. He's got Israelites that had been promised that there was a promised land. These people murmuring, what does he do? They'd wandered 40 years in the wilderness because of their rebellion. Because they wouldn't trust God, serve God. They kept turning away from God. They kept trying to control their circumstances. And you know what? They kept going in circles. And isn't that a lesson for us today? You know, when God's not in control of your life and you think that you are, it's not going anywhere. I don't care what you know, where you've been, who you know, or anything else. I don't care how educated you are, how much money you've got, where you live, what you live in, or anything else. I'm going to tell you, if you don't have God, you don't have nothing. So the book of Joshua takes us into a very important stage in the plan of God. This plan, actually, if you will see it in the true context that it is in, this plan is to redeem the world. Amen. That's the presence of Jesus here. Moses had, had led the sinful children of Israel out of Egypt in their rebelliousness against God. He got them to the Jordan, or got them to the uh, Red Sea. And what did they do? They start saying, we want to go back. We're better in the brickyards of Egypt. Really? You were slaves there. You had nothing there. And you were there because of your rebellion against God to start with. Why do you want to go back to defeat when God's got victory ahead? Amen. It means today it's just not a snap your finger and say, well, I prayed a prayer and whoo, the sun's going to shine and everything's going to be all right. Not necessarily. It may get worse before it gets, it gets better. You may think, well, I prayed, I came to church, I brought my Bible and everything. I even shook the preacher's hand. That doesn't mean nothing. Come on. Listen. It's not, it's not us today. It's him. He's the mountain mover. He's the way provider. He's the door opener. He's the door shutter. And we've got to trust the Lord through all of those things today. Amen. So Israel, they, they needed to get into this land. 
They needed to settle it. For one day, the second Joshua, Jesus Christ, would come to be crucified in that land and that God would raise him from the dead on the third day and he would be victorious over death, hell, the grave, and sin, and everything else that we have against us today. See, the book of Joshua is about God keeping his promises today and taking care of his people, just not the Israelites, just not the Jews. God takes care of all of us today as his children, amen. If God then be for you, who can be against you? And greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. This same God has promised for you and I today. This same God today will take care of every need of your life today. And whatever you're facing today, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall what? Renew their strength. Amen. So we find in God's timing, it was time to move forward. It was not time to go back. It was time to move forward. So in this passage, I find the theme, and then I'll give you several points to go with it. Our theme is simply this. In Christ, in Christ, we keep going forward. Maybe you today have been mired down in the troubles of life, and you just think, man, I'm just not going anywhere. And maybe you've just done like many people have done in this pandemic. Instead of getting up and going forward, you sit down and become a couch potato. I mean, the entertainment in your life is nothing but a television set and bobbing, talking heads that doesn't say anything. Or playing video games or doing this. Listen, come on. It's time to get up and start getting back into the work of God. As a matter of fact, we never should have stopped God's work anyway, should we? We have no right to do that. So then from this passage, we're going to find out how we do exactly that. Go forward. First today, we can't live in the past. You know, I, I listen to people a lot of times. Oh, I remember back in such and such and this and that and the other. And we did this and did that and so forth. And I wish we'd go back to the good old days and all that. Well, let me tell you what. Those good old days were not so good as you may have thought they were. Because you griped in those days just as much as you're griping in the days that we're in today. And some of those good old days, no, I wouldn't want to go back to them. I remember going, whew, Lord have mercy. I remember my grandparents on my mother's side lived down in Gladys, Virginia. And buddy, let me tell you what, they didn't have turn a light switch on, and they didn't have flush a toilet. I mean, there was a little house up on the hill that you visited when the urge came, if you know what I'm talking about. And at night, they would trim the lamps and put the oil in and turn on that lamp. If it was cold, they'd have to build a fire. I don't want to go back to that. No. Hallelujah. I praise God for light switches that turn on lights and thermostats that turn on heat and air. And, and thank God you don't have to go to the spring and get the water. You can turn on a tap and drink all the water that you want. Amen. Forget those days, man. Hallelujah. You can't live in the past. We can't live today in history. Sure, we learn from history, and unfortunately, our nation has decided since this pandemic that we want to eradicate all of history. You can't do it. It's already happened. You can learn from it. Amen. You know, sometimes people in our nation are just downright, excuse the French, they're stupid. Amen. We went into this panic. We're going to change this and we're going to change that. We're going to do away with that. We can't no longer. Come on, people. You cannot eradicate and remove the fact of history. You move forward and you learn from that. Amen. This is the way that I put it. You can't live in the rear view mirror. Try driving down the highway looking in the rear view mirror. Boom. You're going to get your lights knocked out and you're going to get your car destroyed. No matter the challenge, you cannot return to the past. You can learn from it. You can even be blessed by it. But today, let God's people must keep moving forward. Amen. We as a church, we've gone through this issue, and we made a decision last March to get in the back of a pickup truck and to put cars in the parking lot and on the street and get out there, and we didn't hook up an FM transmitter so you could listen to it in your car on your radio. We set up big speakers, and we bladed out the Word of God, and we shook the neighborhood, and we had people sitting on the porches and coming out and hearing the Word of God. Amen. You know what? 
And maybe you say it today. I'm going to call you out on this one. Maybe you say it today for the church. I'll be glad when we go back to the normal. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to go back to the normal. Don't get quiet when I'm getting good. God has blessed this church over the last 14 months. God has touched lives. God has saved souls today. We've got to go forward. We can't go back. And we've got to move forward in God's cadence, in God's direction, in God's leadership. Certainly Moses was a titanic figure. You know, he, he was a, an awesome man in the history of God's people. You read about him. He had confronted Pharaoh. He had led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. He had done great things, and he even had an encounter with God on Mount Sinai. And there God took and flamed into with his finger the Ten Commandments in tablets. Man, whoo, read that resume. So Joshua, what's yours? Uh, name, Joshua, the God of salvation. But there's nothing that follows. Because other than basically following on the footsteps and the heels of Moses, he had never really done anything significant. So he was Moses' assistant. However, what does God say to Joshua? Your time has come, Joshua. A new day has dawned for you. A new day has dawned in your life. And let me tell you something, church. A new day has dawned for you too. Amen. We're not living in defeat as children of God. We're living in victory. We're going to the land, hallelujah, that's prepared for us. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, not cardboard shacks, not rooms, not dwelling places. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go and I prepare this place, and if I go and prepare this place, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hey, you know what that is? That's a promise from God, amen. You today cannot go forward looking in the rearview mirror. Your trials have a triumph in Jesus. Your sins have a forgiving Savior who will blot out your every transgression. And your failures, hallelujah, they are not final. They are just stepping stones to greater blessings that God has for us. This Joshua points to us today. And he points us to Jesus who lived a precisely perfect life. Jesus who died for sinners and bore the sins of all mankind. Jesus who was raised from the dead on the third day. And today, if you believe on that and you'll turn to Christ, he will save you. Amen. I'm glad for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So in Christ, you can't live in the past. Secondly, today, you cannot live today being intimidated. Folks, Moses is dead and everything is now resting on the shoulders of Joshua. What does he do? Listen, he must lead this rebellious people over the Jordan River, which is already out of its banks, and the Jordan River will be in a flood stage, and so he must get the people on solid moral ground and get their focus on God. So Joshua, he had a very big job before him. You and I have a big job before us too, don't we? Moses was a colossal man, and he was a spiritual giant. But honestly, Joshua wasn't. He was not no big deal. And so be careful today how you really compare yourself to other people. Well, these folks over here are doing this, and this group is doing that, and my neighbors have got this and that and the other, and we start mapping ourselves by what other people are doing today. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about God. The tools may change, but the master today, his hand still remains the same. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. A man's success is not measured by what he has. It's measured by the Christ that is within him today. And so the power is not in the person. The power is not in the person. The power is in the maker, the creator, the savior, the sovereign one called God today. God's plan is still in place today. And we worship today by the spirit of God. And we glorify in Christ Jesus today. And we put no confidence in the flesh nor the world. But our trust, T 
R-U-S-T. That's your key word. Your trust is in the Lord God Almighty. Amen. So we must learn to trust Him. So, question. So what makes you feel so insecure? Could it be a form of maybe self-centeredness today that is happening in your life? Have you forgotten today to trust the one that redeemed you? I'm going to go out. I'm going to change things around. Be careful how you jump off the cliff and you don't have the parachute on. Because it, it's, it's, listen, it's not the jump that's going to kill you. It's a sudden stop. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Think about that. Thirdly, we can't live today clamoring for validation today. We all want to be valued. We all want to be noticed. We all want significance today. And you know, there is no validation outside of God, is there? Amen. You may do great and mighty things, but let me tell you what happens. When they put you in that box, whether it's wood or whether it's metal or whether they put you in that furnace and kick up the heat and cook you real good, in a few days, in a few weeks, you know what you are? You're forgotten. I'm glad in God we have today value. We have significance, but it's not us. Greater is he who is in us. Our life is about him, not about us. Our focus is on him, not on us. Everything that's important in our life is about him, not about us today. We don't work today for recognition. We find contentment today in the Lord Jesus Christ of knowing today that we have devotion. Here's another key word. What makes your trust then reliable is the fact that you have devotion to the Lord. You are devoted to Him. It doesn't make any difference whether it's good days or bad days, bad times or whatever the case may be. You are trusting and your devotion is fixated on Jesus. Amen. Number four, we can't live in fear. And we have seen a lot of that over the last 14, 16 months, haven't we? People have flipped out. I mean, absolutely flipped out. Three times Joshua was told to either be of good courage or he was the fact that he was courageous. This is the call of God today on the servant of God. God has never given you a permission to walk around, feel sorry for me, man. You don't know what I've been through. Oh, man, I need a shoulder to cry on. Give me a box of Kleenex. Come on, I need no. The fact of the matter is today, your courageousness today is the fact that you can walk through what you face with the assurance that God is with you and God is for you and he will never depart the scene. Your family may have turned their back on you. Your friends may have turned their back on you. You may have had people that you were close to and they turn around and slipped a dagger right in your back. But let me tell you what, there's a God in heaven that will never do that to you. That is a God who takes you and lifts you up in all the defeat and depression that you're in. And he brings you up to himself and he whispers into your spirit. He loves you and he's for you today. Oh, listen, if you've got God with you for you today, what else do you need? Amen. So God promised to go in front of Joshua. He doesn't stand back and say, hmm, let's see where this thing goes. No, God is a way maker, a provider today. And what Joshua would see in the future, God had already done. Amen. You realize God's not up there running around heaven saying, oh my, we got to get this place ready. We got to get, we got to get the gold laid. We got to get the mansions built. It's already done. He's already made a way for us. He made a way through the cross and salvation. And then that salvation brings in all these other blessings and provisions and goodness that we have generated in our life every day. Hallelujah. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. God made the promise, and he is a promise-keeping God. Some of you today have been through some stuff, haven't you? I'm not going to name all the stuff. I'm just going to categorize it under stuff. Then you can put it down in the order which has happened. Some of you have been through some tough times. But it's God today who's got you up. And it's God who's covering you, protecting you, 
and will bring you through because God has a plan for your life to move forward and not to lay down and quit. So how do you get through? How do you go forward today? This, this, the, the word that really possesses the answer today is that word I've been pushing and saying throughout this message, and it's T-R-U-S-T. -S it's trust. It's trust. You've got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not unto your own understanding. You've got to put your confidence in the Lord. There are three things, and I'm almost through. Three things for you to trust. One, you've got to trust God's promises today. The promises made to Israel, you can appropriate those promises for your life. Absolutely. You said, he just said that to the Jews. No, he was speaking to you and I too. And so God's plan is still in place for you and I today. You need to get in the plan of God and get out of your plan because all your plan is is a dead end street. God's plan is a blessing. And as a believer, God has promised to love you. And I'll tell you the proof of it is, look to the cross. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's what he calls us. He's promised to redeem you. He's promised to forgive you. He's today taken what was against us, the guilt, which really is what sin brings us to. But then what he does at the cross, that guilt takes us to the cross and realizing that, that the sin is forgiven. And guess what? The guilt is removed. You stand before him forgiven and not guilty. That's called justification. God's promise to sanctify you, to use these things in your life, to comfort you, to heal you, to restore you, to bless you today. And also, there's a third one, trust God's word. We, we believe in the sufficiency of the scriptures today because the word of God is ample. It is enough. It is sufficient. We need to focus today our attention on God and his word. Pick up the Bible. Pick up praise. There is a third one. That was the second one. We've got to trust God's presence today. God promised Joshua he would be with him wherever he went and he would bring him through whatever he would face. You and I have that same promise today. Amen. We have that promise from God. We can trust the presence of God who said, I will never leave you. He said, lo, I'm with you always. That's a promise from God. So God said it to Jacob, Moses, to Joshua, to Gideon. He was hiding on the threshing floor and hiding. And you know what God did? God came to him and he says, Hey, you mighty man of valor, a wimped out servant that wasn't doing anything, and God lifted him up and mightily used him. He'll do the same for you and I today. If we will learn to trust the God of heaven and have devotion to him, God will bring you through what you're facing today. And as I close, the promise of his presence, I don't think there's a more beautiful scripture than what is found in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. It goes like this. Think about this. Close your eyes for a moment. Because maybe this is where you are today. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You can take this promise today from God and draw a straight line to Jesus in Matthew, the promise keeper who said, I am with you. When everybody else has failed you, he'll never fail you. So what are you fearful of today, church? What are you going through today? What are you struggling with? What today has somewhat even maybe defeated you and you're about at the brink of taking the white towel and quitting? What is holding you back from trusting God and relying upon him? I have good news for you. You can trust this God who's given us his promises in his word. And you can come today. You can come in salvation if you're lost. You today can come in deliverance. You can come in help and hope that only he can provide. 
You can simply do this today, and here's the promise. You can come to Jesus, for he's there for you today. Would you bow your head for a moment? If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, could I invite you today to receive him? We appreciate our Facebook friends being with us today, and we appreciate the opportunity of bringing the gospel. And we pray your blessings, O oh God, upon our friends today and our family. And may God encourage your heart and strengthen you. And may you look to him because he is your refuge, your strength, and your very present help. Now, church, do you have salvation in your life today? Jesus is offering you eternal life with him. If you'll acknowledge your, acknowledge your sinner... If you today will come to him and say, I know you died on the cross for my sins. Forgive me, O God, and come into my heart, my life, and save me. That prayer, meant in earnestness and sincerity and honesty, will bring you to the throne of God, and your sins will be forgiven, and you can be saved today. If you haven't done that, I'm going to be down front. You're welcome to come and say, Preacher, I need to be saved. I'll be more than honored to pray with you today. But maybe today, as we stand to our feet, there are burdens on your heart, needs in your life, things that you need God's grace and help to get past and through. Maybe today, where you felt like giving up, God is saying it's time to go forward and to trust me and to live for me and have devotion to me. Whatever the need, or maybe you just need to come and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for making a way for me. Thank you that through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Father, I pray right now in this invitation song that you will deal with our hearts and draw us to altars today where we will bring everything in our life. But Lord, if we had just come to the end of us and come to the beginning of you in our life, we can see things start to happen that will glorify you and bring good to your people. Have your will and your way in this invitation. Speak to our hearts. Move on our lives. Have your way, O oh God, I plead the blood of Jesus over this waiting congregation right now in Jesus' name.